In this video, we're going to learn about the rate of conduction and do some calculations and sample problems. So we're going to imagine that we have, uh, you know, a, a thin rectangular prism here. Uh, it could be like a window or some sheet or something. And we're going to talk about how would thermal energy be conducted through this. And so say if we wanted to increase the rate that the energy uh, is going through this object. Um, there's a few different ways to do that. One of the ways would be to create a large temperature difference. And so if you had something really hot over here, like a fire, and you create a high temperature area and a low temperature area, you'll be able to transfer energy through this. And the, higher, the greater the difference in temperature, the faster the energy will be transferred through this. Another thing we could do is make it bigger. And if we increase the surface area, um, so we make the area larger, then we'll be able to conduct more energy, so the rate of thermal energy being uh, conducted will increase. However, if we make the object thicker, uh, wider in this case, or thicker, um, what ends up happening is the rate of conduction actually would decrease because there's more uh, particles to travel through, so it's going to take longer for the energy to get conducted from one side to the other. So these are kind of some general principles when you're looking at the rate of conduction, how fast energy is conducted in an object. And so larger area, faster. Larger temperature difference, also faster. Uh, but if you increase the thickness, you decrease the slower conduction. And all of this combines into an equation that looks like this, where this delta Q over delta T, that is what we call the rate of thermal energy. Um, so that's how fast the energy is getting passed through. Uh, the delta T over delta X, that's what's called the temperature gradient. And so as we saw before, you know, a larger temperature difference means a faster rate. And a larger thickness, it's inversely proportional, so it means a lower rate. Um, area we looked at, we talked about increasing the area means you can pass more energy through. And the only thing we have yet to talk about is this K value here. And so K is what we call the thermal conductivity. And again, this is a little bit like specific heat capacity. It's a property of the materials that you're doing. And so if we look at these, these are some values, kind of common values here. Um, as we can see, silver and gold metals, they tend to have high thermal conductivity. And then as you get down something like glass and water, things like that, or air, um, quite low thermal conductivities. And so these are the K values for some kind of common items. Um, so as you can see, there's a huge difference between silver at 420 and styrofoam at 0 0.01. So let's do an example here. We have a window with the dimensions 1.2 meters and 0 0.8 meters, and there's a thickness of 4 millimeters. The temperature inside the house is 21, the temperature outside, so we want to calculate the rate of energy loss. And the thermal conductivity of this glass is 0 0.84. So first we need to figure out the area of this window. So we're given uh, 1.2 meters and 0 0.8 meters. And so the area of this window is 1.2 times 0 0.8, assuming this is a rectangular window. And we get a value of 0 0.96. The thickness they give as 4 millimeters, and that's our delta x in the formula. And we should always convert millimeters into meters, so it's a 0 0.004. And the temperature difference is going to be the difference between the two temperatures. So it's 21 minus 5, so that's 16. And the K value is given us to us in this question, 0 0.84. And so we need to find the rate of energy transfer. So that's the delta Q over delta T. That's what we're looking for here. So we can set this up using the formula. And we have a K value, 0 0.84, A, 0 0.96. T value, delta T of 16, and the delta X of 0 0.04. And when we calculate this, we get 3,225 joules. Um, we'll put that as one sig fig in this case. So that's going to be about 3,000 joules per second. So this is a rate. So that means this house in that particular window is emitting 3,000 joules per second. Okay, next we want to look at this cylindrical copper rod, length 3.5 meters and 5 centimeters is the radius, and it's in contact with two metal blocks. One of the blocks is at 320, the other is at 140, and the thermal conductivity is 385 for the copper. And so what we have is a scenario where we have two blocks, and they're kept at constant temperature. Uh, we don't know how, but somehow they're kept at 320, 
and 140. And then we're going to try to calculate the rate of energy transfer through the rod. So again, we want to list out some of our variables here. Uh, the delta x, that's going to be the length this time. So that's 3.5 meters. And the area is going to be the radius, uh, pi times the radius squared. So it's pi times 0 0.05 squared. Because um, the radius is given as 5 centimeters, we convert that to meters. So that is equal to 0 0.007853. So that's the cross-sectional area of the copper rod. Uh, the temperature difference is the difference between those two temperatures, so 320 minus 140, so we get 180, and the K value for the copper is 385. So for part A, the rate of energy transfer is going to be 385 times the area times the temperature difference divided by the length of the rod and that gives us a value of 155 joules per second so that's the rate of energy transfer. Now the second question here is determine the temperature two meters away from the hotter block so that's going to be somewhere around here they're asking us to find the temperature of the rod at that point point. and there's a few things we need to know uh, for this copper rod we know that delta Q over delta T, this rate of energy transfer, that's going to be constant throughout. So that stays the same throughout the entire copper rod. So what changes is the temperature gradient. The temperature gradient is the only thing that changes because the K value, the 385, that remains constant and the area remains constant, the, the area that we calculated over here. So the only thing that's going to change is the temperature gradient. And so what we can do is we can set up an equation, a ratio, where we have the entire length, so the entire length, and we can set up the ratio of that, that's the temperature gradient, and we can set that equal to the temperature gradient for the two meters from the hot end. So the entire length, the temperature gradient, is going to be the 320 minus 140 over 3.5 meters. And then what we're looking for, 2 meters from the hot end, so our initial temperature is 320, but then there's some value T, that's the temperature we don't know, and this is going to be the 2 meters. And so we're trying to calculate this. And so what we get is, uh, I'll rearrange this equation, and we'll get T is equal to 320 minus 2 times 320 minus 140, all over 3.5. I multiplied it both sides by 2 and then moved everything around. And this gives me a temperature at 2 meters of approximately 218 degrees Celsius. So that is the temperature 2 meters from the hot end. This problem, we have a block of ice resting on a stone. It's being heated from the bottom and gives us the surface area and the thickness of the stone. And then it tells us the ice is being melted at a rate of 3 grams per second and we need to determine the temperature difference. And they tell us that the conductivity of this stone is 2.8 and the specific latent heat of fusion for water is 334,000 joules per kilo. So we gotta think carefully about this. What's going on in this scenario here? So we have an ice block, and or we have a stone block, sorry, and then an ice block resting on top of it. And this ice is melting at a rate of three grams per second. And then, so we need to figure out what's the temperature difference between this. So we know the, for this stone, we can start listing out some things that we know. So we know the area, 0 0.065, and we know that delta X, I'm gonna write that in meters, 0 0.05, and we know the K value is 2.8. And we're looking for the temperature difference. We don't have that. So we need to, in order to do that, we need to figure out the rate that the energy is being transferred. And the clue is from this, the rate of the mass melting. So in uh, the specific latent heat of fusion is kind of a clue here. So we know when it's melting, when a, when a substance is melting, we know that the energy it takes to melt 
one kilogram of the substance is equal to the specific latent heat. So if we take this and we take the rate of change of this equation, so if we change this to the rate of energy will be equal to the rate of the mass loss times L. And we're given the rate of the mass loss. It's doing 3 grams per second. So this can actually tell us the rate of energy transfer. And so the rate of energy transfer in this case, I'm going to convert this into kilos. So 0 0.003 kilos per second times the specific latent heat of 334,000 joules. So this can tell us the rate of energy transfer, and that's going to be 1,002 joules per second. And then this we can use in the rate of conduction equation, so we know that 1,002 joules per second is equal to the K times the A times temperature difference times X, which is 0 0.05. So we know that energy is being transferred at this rate to the ice. And so if we multiply this out, we can figure out the temperature difference between the top and the bottom of the stone. This gives us a temperature difference of 275 Kelvin. So the difference between the bottom of the stone and the top of the stone is 275 Kelvin.